all right that is being synced that should be being synced this is difficult so my name is cherry i am in taipei right now it needs a little bit more light I'm in Taipei right now. I really like being here. Um, it's a very Japanese style cafe here because it's been a Japanese colony for a very well, it had been a Japanese colony for a very long time. I'm here to enjoy a very nice latte. And at the same time, talk about um, raw file processing. There are many files, not many files, there are many programs out there that can process raw files. You can use Adobe Raw, you can use Adobe Photoshop, you can use Adobe Lightroom. Um, those are three really pro pro popular choices. And I chose the fourth one that is called Capture One. Capture One is part of, um, goodness, what's that called? It's, it's also a medium format camera company, but they have this program I have been using for two years now. I really love it. Before I use um, Capture One, I used to use Lightroom, which is a very similar program. I talked about it in another video before. So today we're just going to talk about my editing process. What I like to do is to, for every single project that I shoot, um, based on its location, the date, or or if it is an event, it on itself is a standalone session, and that's what I do. And that's what you can see here within the file. You see, this is the program colon thing. When you click on it, you will access all these four files within which I have put all the original raw file into capture, all the pictures that I have processed into out I output it into the output and if I decide to use Photoshop to edit it a little bit then I put it in select and anything that you delete in capture one goes to trash because it doesn't want you to delete pictures accidentally which I do all the time so let's go ahead and click on the reason I find this a great way to process your raw file is that you can move around all these things for example I can take this out If I use this more, I can put this in. You can't do that in Lightroom. For example, what I usually do is I adjust the white balance. I, ex I adjust the exposure, contrast, um, brightness, saturation, all in one. I don't really use vignetting, so I am usually putting this away. See, you can delete it. I find it very useful. Dynamic range is amazing in this program. I'll show you. I don't use level that much, so we can put aside. Instead of level, I use curve a lot more. A curve is very powerful here. Color balance, uh, black and white is great as well. So let's go ahead to choose a few pictures. I will talk about rating in another video, but look at all these. There are many ways to to rate your pictures and different ways to find them when you are queuing for a project it makes it very efficient now let's talk about the processing let's pick one that i really like with different kinds of colors in it see what i really like this is it's easy you can just if you're using macbook you can easily do this In Lightroom, it's a bit clumsy for this function. You can only use the slider. No, I don't think there's even a slider. You can only choose like one to eight or eight to one kind of ratio. It's very frustrating sometimes if you want to see, you want to just expand and, and, and contract and just to see how it looks like. I quite like this image. Let's play around with this one. Now here is usually my go-to. I think the white balance is pretty good, but either her skin is, I think it's a little bit um, overexposed on her skin. So let's look at the dynamic range here. It's crazy. Now I shot this with 5D Mark IV. It's a very powerful camera and I absolutely love it, especially for, for the touch screen and all the fancy things. But again, I already talked about that in another video. 
Now you can see her skin tone. Now this is too much. If you use high dynamic range too much, it makes it weird. It makes the skin very flat. Because of course the highlight and the shadow, it gives everything that we see with the depth. That's how we see depth with light and shadow. So if I just over use this highlight too much, it makes the skin very flat. And or if I use the shadow too much, it makes it very flat and strange. It'll make her look really old here. I just aged her. So let's put it all back. Let's just use a little bit of highlight to save the skin a tiny little bit. The thing is, I think she likes her skin really white. I actually do like the background very dark. To me, actually, it's not dark enough. So I'm just quickly going to do this. I'm just quickly going to darken all these areas. I've painted over that. What I'm doing is, I'm pulling down the exposure here as well. Now quickly, you don't see them anymore. Of course, this is a very fast, quick way. Just see how it looks like if you take away all the distractions. Now, the top, I can't take away too much because it's brown color. So I'm going to frame it a little bit. I'm going to press C and that's cropping. Quickly just pull it down like that. I click V. And maybe I'll take this away a bit more. Alright. I really like it. Now, we didn't do much. Well, maybe I want to do this a bit more as well. Let's brush it off. Yeah, I really like it. I like the dark background, the red umbrella and the dress. I need to come back to here, the main area. Let's increase the contrast. You see? Now, of course, that's too much. But I actually like the umbrella looking a bit much. I just don't like it on her face. Maybe we'll do... This is a quick mock-up. If I were to really edit this picture, I'm going to do a layer of it, maybe either in the paint over, I'll do it on Photoshop. But I actually like doing all these color editing when it is still in wall format instead of um, instead of just quickly extract the raw file as is and then put it in Photoshop because you're already losing a lot of information. I like to fix a lot of coloring here. So what we can do is we'll come back to here, I'll add call this umbrella I'll add another layer which is called the kimono so first I am going to paint over the this is umbrella so I'm going to paint over the umbrella it's going to be really hard to see because the paint is red and the umbrella is red when I say the paint is red, it's just the indicator. So you just have to have faith in yourself that you have paint over the whole thing. And then you do contrast. You see? You can see that only the umbrella is being affected. I really like it. Sometimes, this is my style, I like things a little bit over. Like a little bit too much, that's kind of me. In most of my pictures, not all. I like it to be a bit much. I want to, sometimes just to see. No, that totally does not work. That is telling me I have patches.
I have my um, drawing pad here. Actually, you should really use your drawing pad. You don't want your finger too tired. Right, that's too much. I do like it a little bit brighter, but not too much. That's good. I like it just this much. I'm not superstitious, but I really like using just um, 3, 8, 13, 18, 23, 28 because it doesn't really matter if it's, the difference is the different in one it doesn't really matter between 13 and 14, but it's just my steps it makes it easier, so that's, and then we go to kimono I really need to try to make these videos a little shorter. Wah, wah. Now, kimono has different colors here. There are many ways to play around, and of course, the very good way to do is actually come to color editor and then pick the color and then you edit it. I want to saturate the red. I want to maybe saturate the blue because the blue is quite light here. Oh no, so that's, that's it here. Yeah, I'm bringing up the blue. The hue I can change the hue a little bit. Maybe this much. Lightness, maybe I'll decrease the lightness. I see. Oh, I love this. What do you think? Because here it's too light, so if we put the lightness a little high, and its origin is, is when it's zero, it's still too light. There's so much red in this picture, the umbrella, her kimono, and there's just patches of blue. And it's not enough to balance the picture, so I would want to do this. And now we have a bit more balance in blue in the whole picture. Now, now that we have exaggerated the intensity, of the blue then maybe we change maybe not that shot that's too light I like this and it brings out the purple of her dress I don't know if you see that of course when you change the blue it's also affecting the purple as well I really like this and look it's just a few bit of editing and honestly this picture is good enough to be used I just probably would edit it a little bit more on Photoshop but as if I already can export it into a, um, a JPEG file and then I can use that JPEG to use Photoshop to add elements to it but I really like this it's great so you need to try capture one it's such a great program it's so easy to use I really like it I hope I have um, don't know if I can find let me see if I can get a discount code and get you guys to try it out you should do the subscription one I, I don't really I bought the program and they they renew the program every year and it's a hundred dollars every time you upgrade it I don't feel like it's a lot cheaper I think it's better to just subscribe that's all I want to share today very thank you very much for watching and please subscribe and share if you do like and it rhymes. That's all the time we've got. Bye for now.